So at the foundation here, the Anna MacArthur Foundation, we talk about circular economy in terms of three principles. Mm. Um, so designing out waste and pollution, keeping products in use at their highest possible use all the time, and regenerating natural systems. And I think those three principles, they can sound pretty abstract, but actually if you think about applying them to a city, they have enormous resonance. Like cities have so many different things that they need to be getting on with, but designing out waste and pollution, keeping products in use and regenerating the natural systems that are there is a really powerful, um, well, it's a, it's an, it's a end game that one would really like to achieve. So I think there's a real resonance between what happens in cities and the concept of circular economy. And then the other thing I would add is that um, circular economy is going to take many stakeholders to make it happen. So we also work with many. Businesses are a large part of this. They design many of the products. Um, academics can research it further. Students can learn about it. But policymakers at national level and at city level, they have a huge role to play in enabling the conditions, setting out a vision, inspiring people, giving them the incentives to maybe change their behaviour a little bit. So I think there's a really beautiful match between the concept and then the city and what the potential is there. So when you say sort of designing out waste and pollution, is that um, out of cities? Is that basically stopping things from going to landfill or can you elaborate on that concept? Yeah, I think that is one of the things. Mm -hmm. um, landfill is, uh, or incineration either, is a real problem for cities. And actually, at the moment, it's often um, municipal budgets that end up paying for it. I think it's up to 20%, depending on where in the world you are. Um, and I think we can all agree that there's plenty of other things we'd rather have taxpayers' money spent on. So yes, minimizing what goes to landfill is part of it. But other things can be a bit more bit less obvious so like if we could redesign mobility so there was less congestion you can think about congestion as like wasted time mm. basically so that never goes to landfill congestion but it is a waste in the city and also no one likes sitting in traffic anyway so like it would be pretty good to get rid of that and then other things pollution um, like emissions and so on again that doesn't go to landfill but it's a huge emissions is a huge issue anywhere but particularly in cities where an awful lot of emissions like 60 percent of emissions are coming from cities uh, sure yeah when we started the project we were looking into what is it that's on cities minds like what do they care about mm. and i can uh, i can uh, reveal it's not being a circular city that's like on top of their list but what is mentioned across the world in any like long-term strategy is the problem with affordable housing. Mm -hmm. uh, one third of all urban citizens are struggling to get decent housing. Uh, then it's also the transport issue, as Miranda explained, like 3% of glo global GDP is lost in congestion. Um, and emissions are really bad. So that's like those are like main problems that all cities are, are struggling with. But then there's also more long-term priorities around climate change, for example. So most cities are actually located at the coast, which means they are uh, more than other places impacted by climate change. So they also have long-term strategies there. Um, also around sustainability, having a more resilient economy is like a key areas that they, they cities themselves mention that they're working on. Um, and then the circular economy framework and the principles and the like the way we talk about like s system interlinks like help cities to to identify the concrete actions they need to implement. So around housing, for example, uh, there's a huge underutilization of of like buildings. So for example, offices stand unused like 50% of the time during working hours. If you start using like filling that space, like actually using it, you could decrease the need for new buildings. Or if you plan your city in a different way, you can ease transport easily and so on. So it's like it's like a delivery mechanism or like an action plan for how can cities deal with these issues. Yeah, so I mean today more than half of the world's population live in cities and urbanization is, is still increasing. So I think in 2050 it would be three quarters of the world's living oh. in cities. And this, of course, means that all like the impacts of human activities concentrating mm. in these very like small areas, actually. Um, so, like for example, eighty percent of GDP is generated in cities, or seventy-five percent of our resource consumption is actually happening in cities. Um, so, if we can, so this is really interesting because like cities also like it's like interesting context because you have so many different types of stakeholders very closely located. You have policymakers, industry, consumers, uh, knowledge institutions, and so on, very closely to each other. Um, you also, uh, cities is a great place for the sharing economy because you don't, if I wanna lend you my drill, I don't have to like 
transport you that far because you might live next door rather than like 20 kilometers away and so on. So those like cities have like in terms of their density and proximity and scale have very unique opportunities for the circular economy solutions. Yeah. But also if we can solve some of these issues that uh, cities have, uh, that could also create a bigger impact uh, that is going to affect everyone, not just urban citizens. When, again, when we're thinking about cities transitioning from linear to circular, what, should, what are they moving to? <laughs> so, um, yeah, three words. Again, it's a bit of fun, but um, it's useful. And we've, we've ended up focusing on thriving um, because I think that sort of speaks to the economic dynamism behind it. Sort of a new economic productivity, jobs, skills, innovation. So you, that real sort of sense of like the city is going somewhere. And there are examples in the world where like the thriving nature of a city has disappeared. The industry's moved on. Um, uh, Oh, I forgot the name of the city in the US, but there's a very famous one where that exactly that has happened. And there's Detroit, been, uh, yeah, was it? Yeah. Am I thinking of Pittsburgh? The car industry yeah. moving away from there and then coming back. Mm. Like you really, when the city dies, you also put in a lot of effort to bringing it back, and that is around the economy, so mm. thriving, livable. Because to be honest, we all live there and we don't want it to be not livable. Mm. <laughs> um, so the health and environment, um, and then resilient, like to counter the point about cities dying, you want it to be able to keep changing and evolving with the times. Um, and resilience, quite a broad word, you could attach that to economic challenges, environmental challenges are very well reported in the press currently around the sort of climate challenges that are happening. So that sort of resilience. And then also really important and not to be overlooked is the sort of community resilience. And there are elements of the circular economy which, are, which really do help bring people back together, sharing Maya touched on earlier. Um, but also a lot of cities are working around repair hubs currently. That the, I would go to a repair hub to fix an item that's broken, but when I get there, there's a sort of community element to it as well. So I don't want it to sound too overly fluffy and fuzzy, mm -hmm. but I do think it's an important element of this. So yeah, thriving, livable and resilient are the three that okay. we're turning to at the moment. There's a lot happening around how to, to green the build environment, so even, even the facades, but also the streets. Uh, so it's like a simple thing that, like, I mean, everybody li likes a green city, like it's just aesthetically nicer, but it also makes, they like, reduces pollution, reduces noise problems, um, can cool the, cool the city. So in the summer, like US cities, for example, can be 12 degrees hotter than like at the surrounding areas, due, just due to, because like asphalt and, mm. and bricks literally like, absorb heat and it just get really, really hot. So. There's like one area where you can really increase the like the quality of life in a city with like simple, very simple measures. Industrial construction techniques. So it's literally that you you create you make um, uh, building units off site and then like a factory or somewhere like modular unit that you then can assemble on site, which means that you reduce like traffic on site by seventy percent and like construction time even less. So so it's it's yeah that's like a really easy way to do it. Um, Another one yeah. is around 3D printing. Mm -hmm. So off-site being one, or you could then print on or off-site, to be honest, but even if you were printing on-site, yeah. mm -hmm. um, there's a way to go with this technology to really deliver it at like, really big scale. But mm -hmm. if you're printing, rather than like cutting away from bricks and so on, you're actually like adding the material mm -hmm. that you want. So in terms of the, I think the question was around like the dust, debris, and mm -hmm. so on. Like That's one of the elements that you can cut out. Mm -hmm. um, and. I think also speed improves as well. In Phoenix, we've been working to actively refute this idea that waste has no value. We've been using circular economy principles to drive economic development, create jobs, and turn trash into resources. The benefits of circular economy to London are many. It's a great business opportunity. Uh, it's a great social opportunity, bringing people together and creating jobs, and of course, saving resources. The benefits of a circular economy that will what it will bring to Charlotte is that we have a limited amount of space. We have 15 years left on our landfill. This will help open our eyes and help our citizen understand that we can't just be a throwaway society, that we have to be innovative and creative in what we do with our waste. And this would actually help us all own the problem and create a lasting solution. So it was really exciting to hear directly from the cities themselves. Anything that stood out to you from those videos? I like how, I mean, between um, 
Claire from London in that clip was sort of very much focused around um, the business opportunity, which I think is really huge. And then I like the way Charlotte was also talking about bringing the citizens in and also like explaining to us on a sort of day to day, every day level that um, there's a role for us too. So, and I think that's completely true because it take, it's going to take all actors to change. Exactly. Um, and, I, and I think it's dangerous to say that it's all on the government, it's all on business, it's all on, it's all on customers to ask for this. Um, we are all going to have to either innovate, adapt our behaviour a little bit, change the way regulation is made. Um, so yeah, I, it's a nice medley of things that are coming out there. Yeah.